The Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 10 is not a car, it's a weapon and its roots can be traced back way before the ban of Group B cars in the 1980s. And for its endless quest of creating a name for themselves, Mitsubishi has taken motorsport into account and mainly the World Rally stage. As far back as 1961, the company was aiming for rally glory with its 500 Super Deluxe, which is developed for racing with its at the time big 594cc 25 horsepower air-cooled two-cylinder engine. At the 1962 Macau Grand Prix, examples finished 1st, 2nd, 3rd and 4th to lock out every other manufacturer from the under 750cc class podium. By the early 1970s, Mitsubishi had developed the Lancer 1600 GSR that took the top spot in 1974's tough East African Safari Rally. And in 1985, a Mitsubishi Pajero SUV won the Paris Dakar Rally. But the real jewels of Mitsubishi's racing history are actually the road cars that it spawned in my opinion and in particular the Lancer Evo. While its world rally stage history and heritage is undoubtedly one of the greatest, it is also one of the most iconic tuner cars for the globe. And that's why today we're here to feature this car. This is the last generation of Lancer Evo ever to be produced, the Evolution 10. This is Autoculture, I'm Soham Saraf and you're watching The Driver's Hub. Now this being the driver's hub, we're of course not going to feature a stock car. So of course this Evo 10 is actually worked upon by the lads over here at Team FS. And well, it's a very rare occurrence to see, I would say, a stock Evo rather than a modded Evo. So let me just open the hood and tell you what's going on under it. Open up the engine bay and you'll find the 4B11T. Yes, unfortunately after the EVO 8, Mitsubishi decided to discontinue the 4G63T for the Lancer Evolution and in the place of that you get the 4B11T. Many people don't like the 4B11T for some reason but I would say it's a modern version of the 4G63T and in fact this one like most drivers up videos has been worked upon by the guys over here at Team FS. So the most visible upgrade over here is this massive intake over here. But apart from that, this car is running a plethora of mods. It gets a fully titanium HKS exhaust system. It gets a Cobbs ECU, a completely new ECU for a matter of fact. It gets a Cobbs ECU stage one tune. It gets a new boost controller solenoid from Grimspeed. But most importantly, this Lancer Evo 10 has transmission upgrades. It has a SSP 650 BHP transmission upgrade along with a Cetrab transmission cooler with a fan which means that this car can handle upwards of 600 horsepower while making sure that the transmission is not going to blow into multiple pieces and more importantly this car also has the handling upgrades that you would want in a car like this DC coilovers and Brembo 6 piston calipers and brakes which will make sure that the car stops on a dime now, some reasons as to why many enthusiasts disliked the 4 b 11 t was because the Lancer Evo owners had gotten used to the 4G63 and the aftermarket support for the 4 b 11 t wasn't as abundant back in the day. But as time went by, the 4 b 11 t started growing on people and a stock 4 b 11 t can easily outperform a 4G63T. What is more impressive is that a 4B11T with a turbo upgrade, downpipe, intake and a good tune can easily make 500 horsepower. When it comes to the looks, the Lancer Evo 10 doesn't look out of place even in 2022. At the front, you have a really aggressive front end with a massive opening in the grille to let all of that cool air inside the engine and cool it down with the intercooler. And you also have these openings in the hood to make sure that that heat is dissipated out of the engine bay and you have a NACA duct to make sure you have that extra air intake inside the engine. At the side, you have this very aggressive side skirts over here and you have the OG BBS wheels which are actually from factory. Coming down to the back you have this beautiful shark fin kind of design elements on top of the uh, on top of the roof and that is actually inspired from the world of rally and it actually has some sort of a aerodynamic effect on the car and at the back as all Evos do it has a massive rear wing. You have a diffuser and two real 
and not I'm not saying like in terms of surround or anything they're actual real exhaust pipes when it comes to the interior the Lancer Evo isn't the most luxurious or even special you get a pretty basic interior design with some basic dials and a round steering wheel with some paddle shifters but on the contrary the seats are very special with Recaro seats coming from factory but start observing the details with a close eye and you'll see the all wheel drive bias switch transmission cooler fan switch and some cool other gadgets here and there but the reason why i love the lancer evo and the evo 10 especially is because when it came out it was competing with cars like the r35 gtr because those were the only two japanese sports cars at the time and in some tests by evo autocar auto express or whatever publication the evo fq400 which is a more jacked up more hardcore version of the lancer evo 10 actually outscored and outperformed the R35 GTR and if you take into account that you could buy a normal version of the Lancer Evo 10 which was a basically a normal family sedan this family sedan with some crazy engines and some basic upgrades here and there actually outscored a proper thoroughbred sports car and that makes it one of the most legendary cars in my books it was a legend on the dirt and it's a legend even today on the road so thank you so much for watching this video and a big shout out to team fs and autos waxworks for letting us uh, shoot this video it was a great opportunity check them out and check out their page because they're experts in japanese cars so do check them out